Okay, what I'm working on is a Kestrel 54 millimeter minimum diameter rocket from Three Dogs Rocketry. And what I'm doing with the kit is I'm making it so I can squeeze as much altitude out of it as I can. And some of the things that I've done is I've shortened the fin span by 3 eighths of an inch by cutting 3 eighths off the root cord. I've shortened the electronics bay by about an inch. And today what we're going to work on is attaching the fins. The directions call for three layers of five to seven ounce either fiberglass or carbon fiber. And what I'm using is two layers of 3.7 ounce glass. And the reason I'm doing that is if I was to use carbon fiber, which is 5.7 ounce, it's 10 thousandths thick. And if I put three layers on each side, that gives me 60 thousandths more added on top of the 90 thousandths G10, which would make my fin thickness 0.150. If I go with two layers of the 3.7 ounce glass, which is 5 thousandths thick, then I end up at um, 0 0.110 inches thickness for the fins. So I'm losing about 40 thousandths thickness on my fins, which to me is a big deal. When you're squeezing out altitude out of minimum diameter rockets, every place that you can shorten a rocket, make the rocket diameter smaller, the thin, the fin thickness thinner, or the fins different, is where you're going to gain all your altitude from. So today we're going to um, start glassing the fins on. I've already done one bay. The next bay we're working on and what I do is I take a piece of paper and I make a template of what I want to put in there. That's going to be my first layer on each side. I've marked it out with a pencil so that I can put the piece on there. It pretty much disappears when um, you start glassing the fiberglass. This is my last or my second layer which is also my last layer and it's going to go over the top of everything. Uh, what the tape does is it keeps the epoxy from getting on everything and it also gives me a nice straight line to cut the excess glass off once it becomes rubberized. So um, another thing that I do is that I take, and I use carbon fiber toe, I get a big spool of it, um, take off a few inches, double it up. Cut this, and what I'm making my, is my own um, carbon fiber pulp to put in my epoxy for the fillets. Um, I just cut this up. Uh, doesn't take too much for this size rocket. Um, once you get enough done, it, it kind of looks like um, belly button lint or uh, dryer lint. Um, so that's going to go into the epoxy. It's going to be, um, you can see it in here. And what I'm using today is just a um, stirrer from uh, Starbucks, and that's the size that I'm going to put in there. So it's very small. The kit is pretty cool in that it has um, slots for the fins to go in, which I believe um, adds a lot of strength to the fins. They're not going to pop off. They're not going to come delaminated here. So what I'm doing is just a real quick uh, two-layer with uh, pretty thin fiberglass, and I'm only going up a couple of different levels and what that does is it strengthens the root edge where you have a lot of span and as you get closer to the tip you don't really need that strengthening or that thickness it's actually going to hurt you as far as altitude um, so I've already got these pieces cut out use a rotary cutter pretty thin glass you need two and one for each bay. Uh, we're going to go over here and mix some epoxy. Okay, get everything set up. I got my glass here. I got my carbon fiber here. Uh, I'm going to make up some epoxy. Um, I use a uh, which is a boat epoxy. It's a five to one system. I've had really good luck with it. Um, 
It's been to Mach 2 and a quarter without any problems, and it's just an epoxy that I'm happy with and I'm comfortable using. Um, got a scale, got it all paired out. I'm going to look for about 20 grams. Okay, five to one. So I'm going to tear this. We'll go with the hardener. Just use cheap chip brushes. Make sure you have all the loose bristles out. Going to mix it up. I'm going to take some of this and put it in a separate cup. I'm going to take some of the carbon fiber that I've cut up, put in a little bit, mix it up with my steer stick. A little bit more epoxy in. This stick's kind of flimsy. So what you end up with is um, stuff like that. If you cut your carbon fiber in too long of pieces, it gets really hard to work with. So the smaller you can get them, the easier it is to work with. It's kind of like a wet um, cat hairball in a way. So I got that made up. And then one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thin my epoxy. Um, it's kind of controversial. It works for me. So now what I have is a thinner epoxy that's going to um, wet out the glass a little bit better. So grab the rocket, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to put down some right in the bases to start with, coat the whole thing. Still see my pencils lines. They're not really gaudy like a felt pen. Now I'm going to take my carbon fiber and epoxy. I'm going to start laying it down in here.
That's one side. This just strengthens that uh, root cord along there. Um, again, it, it's the body tube is slotted, the fins sl slip right into it. So mostly I, I feel that this is going to be aerodynamic and not structural because of the slotting. Okay, have that done. We're going to take one of our little pieces. We're going to get it started as close as we can. Going to work it to the lines with the brush. I'll hold this up. If you can see that. So, we got it in position. Finishing wetting it out. Our second piece. The reason I put down the smaller pieces first is because I think there's a lot less sanding if you do your full size piece last. On some of my bigger rockets I'll actually put three pieces, one smaller, one medium, and then one almost tip to tip. Um, I've never had a problem with the um, G10 coming apart at up to Mach 2. Maybe if I start going faster. Um, I'll start having to look at the leading edges of the fence, but up to Mach 2, it's been fine. So I take my, my full size piece, drop it into position, come back, start in the middle of the tube, pull it around where it needs to be. Add some more epoxy. it everything wetted out So what I'm going to do is take the tip of my finger, make sure my glove's pulled up so I can feel it. I'm going to just put it in here, run it along the edge. And what that does is it pulls out any of the excess epoxy or filler that I put in there. Um, I'll do it both ways. And then I'll come back and, and get the epoxy off my brush. Now I'm just pulling excess epoxy out of it. Again, all I'm doing is tapping it. Tap it a little bit, whatever you gained.
One last time with the finger. And we're done. So the finished thing is going to look like this. And you can see where the, or the extra stuff was kind of squeezing out the tip up here. I'll be able to cut that off when it turns green. I've got a little bit squeezing out on right here. Uh, I'll cut that off. Um, still see the pencil line. Um, it'll paint over it. So we'll go with two layers. That little one and then a last layer is a full size of it.